The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings programs and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and you may remember my friend 2XL here. In a previous video, we uh, took him from a, a dumb robot toy that just plays cleverly formatted 8-track tapes into an actual working smart assistant powered by Google Voice. Now, there's still quite a bit to do on this project. Uh, as you can see, he's still a little rough cosmetically, so we need to clean that up. And uh, the 8-track player itself is malfunctioning. I need to fix that. And lastly, I want to make him sound a little bit more like the original 2XL voice than the Google Voice Assistant guy uh, that he sounds like right now. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We are finally going to finish this project at long last. So put on your bell bottoms and grab your 8-track players and let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Here is the plan going forward to finish this little guy off. Now, if you are unfamiliar with any of the projects I do here on Element 14 Presents channel, um, basically you're going to see an overview of all of this stuff. And if you want to get into nitty gritty details, uh, you can head over to the Element 14 community at element14.com slash presents. You get all kinds of information there. Lots more detail on all of this stuff as well. So I will see you there. First things first, I want to fix the 8-track player. Now, it's very important to me uh, when I am working on a vintage piece like this to keep as much of the original functionality intact as possible and just add on the new niceties, the new features that uh, I like to see, like the little assistant thing. So uh, there is a problem with the 8-track player. I think the heads, so, something's wrong with the heads. They're not lining up just right. Uh, and it's playing multiple tracks at the same time, so I need to fix that. Once that's fixed, I want to be able to change his voice, so i got to build a voice changing circuit, make him sound a little bit more like the original 2XL. Now, of course, I'm not going to be able to make him sound exactly like 2XL himself, but I don't want to get it close. Once all that is done, then we can look at rewiring the circuit. So I want to be able to switch the audio source from the 8-track player to the Google Assistant. When the, so when the 8-track player's in, in use, I wanna be able to switch off the audio source from the Assistant, and then vice versa. You know, If you pull the tape out, then it switches back automatically, no problem. So I wanna have that available. Uh, need to integrate the voice changer into the audio out. And while I'm working on audio output, this part right here bothers me. This is the original power in, and it's a 3.5 millimeter uh, mini jack and what I would like to do is actually turn that into a proper headphone jack because I've already routed power uh, back here to a, a barrel jack a more proper fit barrel jack so I'd like to do something with this so he doesn't have this weird like little hole in his kidney here so I'm gonna do that as well now once all that's done it's all cosmetic from there we're gonna retro bright some of the plastics clean him up real good uh, put everything back together maybe get some new panel, uh, maybe some new labels for these panels that are kind of not doing so great. Okay, that's the plan, sticking to it. Now let's uh, perform a little surgery. Some of you might recognize this mess as the guts of an 8-track player. Some of you, skewing towards the younger side of this audience, might be wondering what an 8-track player actually is. Well, kiddies, once upon a time, MP3s used to come on these plastic cassettes that look a lot like video game cartridges, but you can't put them in your Atari 2600. Believe me, I tried. I was six, all right? Now, I've done some diagnosis already, and I've narrowed the problem down to a couple of key issues. Let's put a tape in first. 
there seems to be a bad connection here in this potentiometer. Uh, I can try hitting that with a little bit of deoxid and see if that works. If not, I can just go ahead and replace this thing because it's 45 years old and um, I can probably grab another one on uh, element 14 and just solder in a replacement. So I may end up doing that anyway. Now for two, if you listen very carefully, if you listen closely, you can hear there's two different things going on. So that tells me that the head is misaligned. And upon closer inspection here, we notice that this little carriage that holds the reed head, the playback head, is actually cracked. There's an alignment screw right here, and the, uh, the hole for that alignment screw is just split wide open. So let's go ahead and do the easy part first. Let's hit this with a little bit of deoxid and see what it does. Okay, we let that sit for a minute. Let's give it a test. Contact. Okay, that seems to have fixed it. So we have a nice tapered uh, volume control now. Okay, so that is, um, that's fixed. Fantastic. So uh, maybe it'll last another 40 years. Maybe it won't, but you know, it's working for right now. So now on to this guy, and this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to take a few things out of the way first before I can get there. So what I'm looking at here is this, uh, this little uh, clip right here. My kingdom for a good pair of ring pliers. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Gosh, I hope I remember how this goes together. I'm just manhandling this. Everybody's going, <gasps> yeah, at least I'm not taking a Dremel to a security screw because I'm too lazy to order them. Right. Don't look, Ethel. There we go. Now that's in the shape that it needs to be. I'll just drop a little CA on there. All right, that's probably too much. So let's wait for that to cure. We'll see what we have. All right, uh, the sand acrylite has cured. It's a little off, so I have reinforced it with epoxy, and we're gonna see if this actually works. And of course, putting it back together is always like easier said than done. Yes, I know it's not the correct tool. However, it works. Groovy, now you've heard the voice and you can tell it's, it's a little different. So now I need to build that voice changer to get the Google Assistant voice to sound a little bit more like this one here. Now that I've got the 8-track taken care of, I want to have the Google Assistant sound a little bit more like 2XL. And uh, to do that, I'm probably gonna have to run the audio out from the Raspberry Pi through a voice modulator and then out to the speakers. Now I've been playing around with the Velman PMK171 voice modulator kit. And if you wanna see more about this, there is a great video on the learning circuit where Karen actually puts it together and puts it through his paces, plays around with it a little bit. I'm gonna link that in the show notes on element14.com slash present so you can see it there. So I wanted to use that as a jumping off point. And here is the basic circuit diagram for the Velman kit. Uh, over here, we have an LM386 bog standard audio amplification circuit. And then over here is this HT8950 based um, voice modulator. Now I'm not gonna go into a lot more detail here, but I'll be putting more information in the show notes on element14.com as well. Uh, but for right now, let's just get this thing onto some breadboard and let's start playing around with it a little bit and then we can come up with our own design. So I've got it all soldered together, and it is working. However, it doesn't quite sound the way I want it to. So, I think we're going to have to go to plan B. Plan B! So, I've 
run across this um, toy voice changer thing that I think suspiciously might be a variant of the same chip, but it sounds so much better. In fact, I found out on Wikipedia that the first product to have a barcode was a pack of Wrigley's chewing gum. So this toy sounds so much better and just makes that particular voice work so much more like uh, the original QX Power voice. So, I'm going to take this thing apart, see how it works, and put it in line with the uh, Raspberry Pi audio out, and I think we're going to be done with this part. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! All right, now one last electronics module that I have to build before I put this whole thing together. Uh, I need to get 12 volts running to the uh, eight track player, so this will actually function, as well as five volts and two and a half amps to this Raspberry Pi to power the Google Assistant. So to do that, I need to build a five volt buck converter. So uh, let's take a look at that circuit real quick. Okay, pretty simple circuit. We have up to 40 volts DC in, uh, set of capacitors going into an LM2678 uh, voltage regulator, Schottky diode, linear inductor, a couple more filtering capacitors, and we get five volts out. Of course, I'll have this and everything else you need on the show notes on element14.com slash presents, so you can check it out there. So here we are, we're all soldered together, and let's give this a try. You can see it's uh, floating just a little bit, uh, but uh, hold on to your butts. Yes! <laughs> yes! All right, we got 12 volts here, we've got five volts coming out over here, and I think we are just about ready to put this thing together. He's all buttoned up. Let's uh, see if it actually works. Contact. Hold on to your butts. Ah, <sighs> oh, frack. <laughs> so I um, I made a boo boo. Um, Instead of uh, wiring this thing to run off of five volts and two and a half amps for the Raspberry Pi, I figured because I needed 12 volts here, I would use a 12 volt power supply. Unfortunately, the 12 volt power supply that I have doesn't produce enough power, uh, so there's not enough amperage. And so as soon as you plug the Raspberry Pi in, it just sucks all the power out. So, so I did it backwards. Um, I should have run this off of the Raspberry Pi power supply, five volts, two and a half, three amps, and then siphoned off uh, 12 volts, because this only needs about 300 milliamps, uh, use a boost converter to give this uh, 12 volts at an appropriate small a little amount of amperage. So instead of going through the rigmarole of building a boost converter, uh, I'm just going to use this little module that I have off the shelf and uh, install it right about there wire it all together, and we're gonna call this thing done. Okay, take two. Uh, fixed a few things on the interior. Uh, let's plug them in and see what happens. <laughs> so I changed the startup sound because all the beep -boop, bleep 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 b
the voice changer. So I got to work on that a little bit. I'm probably just going to record something new um, and then put it through 2XL voice. But anyway, so he works um, so far. Uh, hey, 2XL, <coughs> tell me something interesting. Sing me a song. Two <laughs> XL. Help me wash my hands. Tell me about the Element Fourteen community. So, um, in addition to him working like that, I can also... The mic is muted. The mic's back on. I can actually push the button and um, toggle the microphone. Um, so, the ultimate test here is, of course, will he still play his uh, 2XL 8-tracks? So, let's pop one into the belly here. Turn it on. Please push A, B, or C now. Okie dokie. I wonder how you spell that. In any case, you have pushed button C, and I will obey and ask you a question about astronomy. I will make this a true or false question, so please be sure to use the true or false buttons to answer it. True or false, there are nine planets in our solar system. There are nine planets in our solar system. Please answer true or false now. Okay, um, so this was made in the 70s, so that's going to be true. Um. You are a superior biological unit. You have pushed the correct answer. That is good. You are smart. It's perfect. I will now give you a more difficult question. You have earned yourself a harder question. And by the way, for this next harder question, I will choose the subject. Okay, here we go. Here is your more difficult question. Without looking, which president is pictured on a quarter? Is your answer A, Abraham Lincoln? B, George Washington, or C, Alexander Hamilton. Please, if you don't mind, answer A, B, or C now. Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. No, it was George Washington. Oh, oh, I am sorry. I was sleeping. Wait, I must compute your answer again. Finally, I got the looks, but you got the brains. You have answered B, and B happens to be correct. Good work. You are very smart. So electrically and mechanically, 2XL is pretty much done. Now, cosmetically, there's still a few issues. I need to retrobrite the plastics. I need to get new labels put together. But I'm out of time here, so I'm going to have to finish that on my blog at the Element 14 community. You'll find a link down in the doobly-doo. You can catch up with this guy here and all of my goofy projects that you've seen. Uh, you'll find sketches. You'll find schematics. You'll find the links. You'll find everything you need to replicate and or improve upon any any of the things you've seen here. While you're there, say hi to Clem and Karen and Lorraine and DJ and Dave and all of the Element 14 Presents hosts. And if you like free stuff, check out the road test program where you can get free equipment just for giving your opinion on it. In the meantime, my name is Matthew and until next time, remember it's okay. It's just a prototype. Rally ho, y'all.